All right, we're recording. Cool, cool, cool. All right, working with JSON. JavaScript object notation is a standard text-based format for which is an instruction data based on the JavaScript object syntax. It's commonly used for transmitting data in web applications, uh, sending some data from the server to the client so it can be displayed on a web page or vice versa. You'll come across it quite often, so uh, in this article, we can all use JavaScript, including parsing JSON, um, so that we can access data within it and creating JSON. So, prerequisites: HTML, CSS, JavaScript. I guess object-oriented JavaScript basics which we've uh, gone into. Uh, so, the objective is to understand how to work with data stored in JSON and create JSON objects. Uh, no, really, what is JSON? Uh, JSON is a text-based Data format following uh, JavaScript object syntax, which was published by W. Foster. Even though it closely resembles JavaScript object and literal syntax, it can be used independently from JavaScript, and many programming environments can use to load, parse, and generate JSON. JSON exists as a string. Data across the it needs to be converted to a native JavaScript object uh, when you want to access data. It's not a big issue. JavaScript provides a global JSON object and has methods uh, available for converting it between the two. No, converting a string to a native object is called parsing, while uh, converting oh, a native Adam, object. Adam, Adam, can you raise your voice? I, I, barely, I can barely hear you. Oh, you can barely hear me? What am I yeah. now? Is that better? Yeah, I can hear you. Cool. All right. So, uh, no, converting a string to a native object is called parsing while converting a native object to a string can be transmitted across networks, and that's called stringification. So a JSON object can be stored in its own file, uh, basically just as a text file within the extension of JSON, uh, or my type of application JSON. JSON structure, as provided above, a JSON is a string whose format very much resembles the JavaScript object literal format. Um, you can include the same basic data types inside JSON as you can in a standard JavaScript object. Numbers, strings, arrays, booleans, and other object literals. Um, this allows you to construct a data hierarchy like so. So, it is squad name, hometown, secret base members with a subarray, or sub, uh, yeah, subarray, with each array being an object. That's coming. All right. Uh, if we loaded the object into the JavaScript program, parse it in a variable called Google Rails, for example, uh, we could then access the data inside using the same dot or bracket notation we look at the JavaScript the face of the JavaScript, for example, superhero.hometown or superhero.bracket after. Uh, to access data further down the hierarchy, you simply have to have a chain or have to chain the required property uh, names and array indexes together. For example, to access the third superpower of the second hero listed to the members list, you do this superhero bracket members bracket one bracket powers bracket two. First, we have a variable name superheroes. Inside that, we want to access the members property, uh, so we use members. Members contains an array populated by objects. Uh, we want to access the second object inside the array, so we use uh, the one. Inside the object, we want to access the powers property, so we call powers. Inside the powers property is an array containing the selected superhero powers, or selected hero superpowers. Uh, we want the third one, so we can use the index two. So, in the JSON, seen above, inside the folder, and the JSON test by HTML example, try loading this up and accessing the data inside the variable through the branch of that Cool. Arrays as JSON. As we mentioned, JSON text literally or basically looks like a JavaScript object, and it mostly does. The reason we said mostly right is because an array is also a valid JSON. For example, so you see it's an array of objects, Monk Human and Madam Uppercut. Uh, the above is perfectly valid JSON. Uh, so you'd have to access the array as in parse version by starting with an index. Uh, Array index, for example, zero power zero. This is the first powers and the first power. Uh, cool. 
Other notes, JSON is purely a data format. It contains only properties and no methods. JSON requires double quotes to be used around strings and properties. Single quotes are not valid. Even a single misplaced comma or colon can cause a JSON file to go wrong or not work. And you should be careful to validate any data you are attempting to use. Although computer generated JSON is less likely to include errors as long as the generated program is correct. You can validate JSON using an application like JSON Print. JSON can actually take the form of any data type that is valid for inclusion inside JSON, not just arrays or objects. For example, a single string or number that will be a JSON object. Now, unlike in JavaScript code, in which objects uh, may be uncoded in JSON, only coded strings may be used as properties. Cool. So, active learning, working through a JSON example. So let's take a let's take that. So let's work through an example to show how we would make use of some JSON data on the website. Getting started. To begin with, make local copies of our heroes.html and style.css. The latter contains the simple CSS to style per page. The former contains a very simple copy of HTML. So, that up. Side, I guess. Plus, a script element in the job scroll is the working group. At the moment, only contains two lines. So that references the features for talking about queries in the header and queries in the sites. Uh, JSON data available on our GitHub. We're going to superload into our pages some nifty domination display elements. All right, obtaining the JSON. To obtain the JSON, we are going to use an API called X, uh, XML HTTP, often called XHR. Um, this is a very useful JavaScript object that allows us to make network requests to retrieve some resources from the server via the JavaScript. So images, text, JSON, even HTML sections. Meaning that we can update small sections of content uh, without ever having to reload the entire page. This has led to be uh, more responsive. This has led to responsive pages. It sounds exciting, but it's beyond the scope of this article. Much of it in more detail. All right, so to start with, we're going to store the URL of the JSON we want to retrieve in there. So, I think it's in here. Request. Cool. 
to create a request, we're going to create a, a new request object instance from the XML HTTP request constructor using the new crew book. Adding to the follow above the last line. Object. All right. Number three. Now we need to open our new request using the open method. Add the following line. It looks very much like Ajax. Other web packages like Ajax calls. Adam. Yeah. I can barely hear you. I can't even I can I can hear you. Oh. All right. I'm trying to talk as much as I can. I understand. I understand. You just go ahead. Go ahead. This takes two, at least two parameters. Um, there are other optional parameters available. We only need the two mandatory ones in this example. Uh, hold on. Here, can you hear me better? Is that any better, DK? Yeah, you're louder. OK, cool. It might have been just my mic on my actual computer, I realize now. Cool. Sorry. My bad. All right. Uh, the HTTP method uh, to use when making a request, in this case, get is fine as we are retrieving some simple data. The URL to make the request uh, to, so this URL of the JSON file we stored earlier. Next, we add two lines. Here, we are setting the response type uh, to JSON so that the XHR knows that the server will be returning to JSON. And this should be converted behind the scenes into a JSON by JavaScript object. Then we need to send the request with the send method. The last bit of this section involves waiting the response to return from the server, then dealing with it. Uh, adding the following code below your previous code. Looks like function. So here we're storing the response to our request available in the response property in a variable called superheroes. The variable will now contain the JavaScript object based on the JSON. We are then parsing that object to two function calls. The first one will fill the header with the correct data, while the second one will create the information card for each hero on the team and insert it into the section. We have wrapped the code in an event handler, which runs when the load event plot fires on the request of the object. So before you can see that on the top. This is because the load event fires when the response has successfully returned. Doing it this way guarantees a a request.response will definitely be available when we try to do something with it. Populating the header. Now that we've uh, retrieved JSON and converted it to a JavaScript object, let's make use of it by writing two functions that were referenced above. First of all, add the function below the mining, below the previous code. Let's see now. So, uh, we have called the parameter JSON obs to remind ourselves that this JavaScript object originated from JSON. Here we create an H1 element with create element set as text contents equal to squad name property uh, of the object, and then we append it to the header using the head child. We then do a very similar operation with the paragraph create it, set its text contents, and append it to the header. The only difference is that the text is set to a concatenated string containing both hometown and formed properties of the object. So, grading hero information cards. Next, we add the following function at the bottom of the code, which creates and displays the superhero cards. So, let me do that. Cool. Yeah. Sure, we'll go with the detail. 
start with restore the members property of the JavaScript object in a new variable. This array contains multiple objects that contain information for each field. Next, we use a for loop to loop through each object in the array. For each one, we create several new elements in article and each two, three paragraph elements, and a unordered list of it. We set the H2 to contain the current hero's name. We fill in three paragraphs with their secret identity, age, and mind, saying super superpowers to introduce the information in the list. Store the powers in another new variable called superpowers. This contains an array that lists the current hero's superpowers. We use another for loop uh, through the current. Oh, I see. We use another for loop to loop through the current superpowers. For each one, we create a list element uh, and put the power superpower inside it. Then we put the list item inside the unordered list element. My list using append child. The very last thing we do is append the h2 paragraphs elements and the unordered list inside the article element. My article. Uh, then append the article element inside the section. The order in which things are appended is important. Uh, this is uh, the order that they will be displayed in HTML. Deal with it later. It's not important. I mean, they have audio only. Okay. <laughs> Converting between objects and scripts. The above example was simple terms of accessing JavaScript object because we set the XHR request to convert JSON response directly to a JavaScript object using request.response equals JSON. But sometimes you won't be so. Sometimes you'll receive raw JSON string and we'll need to convert it into an object ourselves. Uh, and then we will want to send a JavaScript object across the network. Uh, we'll need to convert it to a JSON script before sending it. Luckily, these two problems are so common in web development that a built-on JSON, JSON object uh, is available in browsers, which contains the following two methods. Parse, which accepts uh, JSON string as a parameter and returns corresponding JavaScript object, and stringify, that accepts an object as a parameter and returns the equivalent JSON string form. You can see the first one in action on the Heroes Fitness JSON Parts HTML example. Uh, this does exactly the same thing as the example we built up earlier, except that we set it to HR to return the raw JSON text, then use Parse to convert it into actual JavaScript object. The piece of code is here. Show it. Uh, as you might guess, Stringify works the opposite of both. Try entering the following lines into your browser console uh, one by one to see it in action. Yeah, it would work. It would work. So it's just a fun thing. So, JSON. JSON, which returns with an object, string, so it returns. Here we're creating a JSON object, then checking what it contains, then converting it to a JSON string using the stringify method, um, saving the return value in a new variable, then checking. In this article, we've given you a simple guide to using JSON in your programs, including how to create and how to parse JSON, and how to access data locked inside it. In the next article, we'll begin looking at the object-oriented JavaScript. Cool.
Cool. Anybody got any questions about JSON? So JSON, they say it's a string. Right. So does I mean, JSON always start with like quotation marks or does it just look like a regular object when you look at JSON? Yeah, so it looks like a regular object in the sense of, uh, let's look at this. So this dude, right? It'll probably return what it would look like if it did. Nope, that's why, because it doesn't exist. <laughs> oh, that's why, because there's a stupid dot at the end. There. Okay. All right. So yeah, it basically is like an object literal in the sense that you'll always see um, the curly braces first, and then each thing, each property. Okay. Which now makes me realize that's probably why this is. Nope. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> All it takes is a period. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Okay, so that's what happens. And that's what happens most of the time when you try to like, you know, use jQuery, Ajax calls. Mm -hmm. I guess React with Axios when you're collecting. Yeah, making API yeah. calls is really just. So when you're making API calls, I wonder if they they teach that a little further about you know all that other code they put in there with the um, what is it the um request and uh, request.open, oh, request.send. Yeah. The XML HTTPS request object that, you're, that we're using. Yeah, because I mean, I understand that we were pasting yeah. that in there and it made it work. I just didn't understand what all those things were doing. Yeah, so yeah, I guess I'm, I'm sure they'll, it'll probably be in like DOM APIs. I know okay. there's a section later that I will do that. My hope is that they'll do it, but I guess the problem is also that like the standard of practice is either using the library, like it's rarely using that that uh, whatever we were doing the XHR HTTP request. Mm -hmm. Normally, somebody just like plugs in jQuery and uses the AJAX method. Or uh, uh, there's also I guess fetch too, like fetch is a thing within the browser. So, but. I mean, it doesn't mean like you can't use it. I'm sure so does like React have its own way of pulling in like JSON files and Angular have its own? I mean, they use Axios. Yeah, so like each of them, like they basically use third party libraries, which really just do this, right? Like they end up just using this. Uh, so this is the base of what they would use. Mm. So I think it's helpful. I think it's, but. I think most like most jobs you're going to end up using somebody else's library or something else to access it and write rather than just building something from the browser. Right. Okay. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, I'm pretty sure more of this will make sense as I get closer. Into yeah, I guess this is the APIs. tough. Right? Like this is a high level high level stuff, but they also go into like great detail or not great detail. They just give you an example and they're like, yep, well, now you understand it. And you're like, wait a minute. I kind of right. do, but still there's a lot of questions. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So uh, DK, do you want to do the next one? DK, you didn't fall asleep, did you? I know it's early for you, man. <laughs> hey, um, I, I couldn't hear uh, Adam, so I've been going through it myself, so he's a bit, bit far behind. It's not far behind, I'm a bit behind you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I was following along, but I still don't quite fully understand. I understand what JSON is. Um, yeah, I understand what I'm just trying to, like, uh, arrange the codes yeah, out. You know? Yeah, I guess the problem is that, like, how much are you, like, yeah, I guess how much are you supposed to understand all this? Uh, like I'm right. sure they're building up to something. Mm -hmm. sense, yeah, I mean, I think I got the gist of that was like, this is JSON, this is an object. You can pull data out of it using bracket notation or dot notation, you know, just like you would an object with nested arrays and nested objects. Um, I pretty much got that. And I think that makes sense and is helpful. 
Yeah, exactly. So DK, do you want us to hold off on doing this next section or? Um, let me just, I'm just trying to round up like, uh, I mean, like the last part before the summary. Okay. Just give me time. Yeah, just let us know. DK, you got a fan running on you because I keep getting like this wind sound. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. At yeah, regular yeah. intervals. <laughs> yeah. It's like an oscillating fan. <laughs> building practice in the previous article we looked at all the essential javascript object theory and syntax details giving you a solid base to start from in this article we dive into its practical exercise giving you some more practical in building custom javascript objects with the phone and colorful results for your site, basic computer literacy, basic understanding of HTML, CSS, familiarity with JavaScript basic, see the first steps and building blocks and OOJS basics, see introduction to objects, objective to get some practice with using object and object related techniques in a real world context. Let's bounce some balls. <clears throat> in this article, we will write a classic bouncing ball demo to show you how useful object, object, objects can be in JavaScript. Our little balls will bounce around on the, on the screen and change colors when they touch each other. The finished example will look like, will look a little, will look a little something like this. Okay, that looks nice. The example will make use of the Canvas API for drawing the balls to the screen and the request animation frame api for animating the whole display we don't need to have any previous knowledge of this apis we hope that by the time you finished this article you will be interested in exploring them more along along the way we will make use of some nifty objects and show you a couple of nice techniques like bouncing balls off walls and checking whether they have hit each other otherwise known as collision detection Getting started. To begin with, make make local copies of uh, each uh, index and each star and main JS file. This contains the following respectively: the rest of the HTML document featuring yeah, an each one tag element, a canvas element to draw ball on, and elements to apply our CSS and JavaScript to our HTML. Some very simple styles which Mainly self to style and position each, each one and get rid of any scroll, scroll bars or margin, you know, margin around the edge of the page so that it looks nice and neat. Three, so some JavaScript that serves to set up the canvas element and provide a general function that we're going to use. Okay, so let's um, the first part of the script. Okay, let's um, get this out of the way.
Sorry. Why did I stop sharing this shit? Sorry, guys. <laughs> you just took off. Okay, so. Um, Okay, the first part of the script looks like this. So. Okay. The first part of the script looks like this. The script gets a reference to the canvas element and calls the get context get content method on it to give us a context on which we can start to draw. The resulting variable CTX is the object that directly represents the drawing area of the canvas and allows us to draw 2D shapes on it. Next, we set variables called width, width and height and the width and width and height of the canvas element represent the canvas.width and canvas.height property. So you call the width and height of the browser viewport. The area that the page appears on, this can be got, this, this can be got from the windows.inner width and windows.inner height. Okay. We see here that we are chaining multiple assignments together to get the variables all set quicker. This is perfectly okay. The last bit of initial script looks as follows. <coughs> function random min max. The function takes two numbers as results, as arguments, and returns a random number in the range between the two. Modeling a ball in our program. The program will feature lots of balls, balls bouncing around the screen, since, since these balls will, will all behave in the same kind of rhythmic sense, represent them with an object. Let's say by adding the following constructor to the bottom of our code. And this, this bottom. Here, we include some parameters that define the properties each ball needs to function in our program. Um, X and Y coordinates, the horizontal and vertical coordinates where the ball will start on the screen. This can be, this can range between zero, top left, and corner to the width and height of the browser viewport, bottom right and corner. Horizontal and vertical velocity VLX and VLY. Each ball is given a horizontal and vertical velocity in real terms. These values will be regularly added to x, x slash y coordinate values when we start to animate the ball. To move them by this, by this much on each frame, color each ball gets a color size. Each ball gets a size. This will be its radius in pixels. This sorts the properties out. But what about the methods? We want to actually get our boss to do something in our program. Drawing, drawing the ball. First, add the following draw method to the ball's prototype. <coughs> Using this function, we can tell our ball to draw itself onto the screen by calling a series of mem a, a series of 
members of the 2D canvas context we defined earlier, CTX. The context is like the paper, and now we want to command our pen to draw something on it. First, we use big path to state that we want to draw a shape on the paper. Next, we use fill star to define the color we want the shape to be. We set it to our false color property. Next, we use the arc, arc method to trace an arc shape on the paper. Its, its parameters are the X and Y position of the arc center. We are specifying our balls X and Y property. The radius of our arc, we are specifying our balls size property. The last two parameters specify the start and end number of degrees around the circle that the arc is drawn between. Here we specify zero degrees and two, two times pi, which is the equivalent of 260 degrees in radian. And not only you have to specify this in radian, that gives us a complete circle. If you had specific, so specify only one by one, one, one times pi, we get a semicircle 180 degrees. Last of all, we use the fill method, which basically states which, which drawing that uh, which by states finish drawing the part we started with big part and fill the area it takes up with the color we specified earlier in few stuff. You can start testing the object, object out already. Save the code so far and load the file in the browser. Open the browser JavaScript console, then refresh, then refresh the page so that the canvas size, the canvas size change to the smaller visible report left when the control open. Type, type in the following to create the ball instance. Okay, one canvas is on the screen. When you enter the last line, you should see the ball drawn with your ball draw itself somewhere on your canvas. Updating the ball's data, you can draw the ball in position, but to actually start moving the ball, we need to update to update from function of some kind. In an update function of time, add the following code to the bottom of the JavaScript file to add an update method to the balls prototype. Balls prototype. The first four parts of the line fun function check whether the ball has reached the edge of the canvas. If it has reversed the polarity of relevant velocity to make the ball travel in the opposite direction. So, for example, if the ball has 
was traveling upward, positive velocity then. The vertical velocity is changed so that it starts to travel downwards instead of negative. Instead, negative velocity y. In the in the four cases we are checking to see whether the x coordinate is greater than the width of the numbers. The ball is going the ball is going off the right hand edge, checking to see whether the x coordinate is smaller than zero. The ball is going off the left hand edge, checking to see whether the y coordinate is greater than height of the canvas, the ball is going to the bottom edge, checking to see whether whether y coordinate is smaller than zero, the ball is going off the top edge. In each case, we are including the size of the ball in the calculation because the x, y, x slash y coordinates are in the center of the ball. But we want the edge of the ball to bounce off the perimeter. We don't want the ball to go halfway up. We want the ball to go halfway up the screen before it starts bouncing back. The last two circles, the last two lines are the y and the velocity x value to the x coordinate. Because the y y to the y coordinate. The ball is in effect, is in effect moved each time the method is called. This we will do for now. Let's get on with some animation. Animating the ball. Now let's make this form. We're now going to start adding balls to the canvas and, and animating them. First we need to we need somewhere to store our balls. The following area will do the job. Add it to the bottom of the board now. Okay. All programs that animate things generally involve an animation loop, which serves to update the information in the program, then render the resulting view on each frame. Of the animation. This is the basis for most games and other, and other such programs. Add the following to the bottom of the code. Our loop function does the following. It sets the canvas fill color to semi-transparent black and draws a rectangle of the color across the whole width and height of the canvas using fill rect. The four parameter provide a start coordinate and a width and height for the rectangle rectangle drawing. This serves to cover up the Previous frames drawing before the next one is drawn. If you don't, if you do not do this, you just see long snakes roaming, roaming their way around the canvas instead of balls moving. The color of the field is set to semi-transparent RB 0.5 to allow the previous few frames to shine through through to using the light trails behind the ball as they move. If you change the old point two to one, you won't see them at all anymore. Try try varying this um, numbers to see the effect it has. Create a new instance of our ball using the random value generated with a random function. Then push, then, then push, push it onto the end of our ball array, but only while the number of the ball in the array is less than 25. 
So when we have 25 balls, we can no more balls appear. You can try varying the number of balls then less than 25. You get more or less balls on the screen, depending on how much processing power the computer has, my brother has, you will find several thousand balls that slow down the animation rather than the loss. Okay. Look through all the balls in the balls array and run each ball's draw and update function to draw each one on the screen and, and then do the necessary update to position the velocity in, in time for the next one. For run the function again using the request animation frame method when the method is constantly running. When the method is when the method is constantly run and passed the same function in the tool one that that function is set number of times per second to create a smooth animation. This is generally done recursively, which means that the function is calling itself every time it runs, so it will run over and over again. Three, last but not least, add the following line to the bottom of your code. You need to call the function one of once it gets the animation started. Once you get the animation started. That's that's it for the basics. Try say try saving and refreshing to save the bouncing balls out. Wow. This looks lovely though. <clears throat> bouncing balls. Okay. Adding collision detection. Now for a bit of fun, let's add some collision detection to our program. So our balls will our balls will know when they have it another. First of all, add the following method definition below where you define the update method. Balls the two type of things. This method is a little complex, so don't worry if you don't understand exactly how it works for now. The function follows. Okay. It's not really that complex. For each ball, we need to check every other ball to see if it has collided with the current ball. To do this, we open the we open another for loop to look through the, all the balls in the balls array. Immediately, immediately inside our loop, for immediately inside our for loop, we use an if statement to check whether the current ball being looped through is the same as the ball as the one we are, we are currently checking. We don't want to check whether a ball has collided with itself. To do this, we check whether the ball, whether the current locate, current ball, that is the ball whose collision detects whose collision detect method is being invoked is the same as the loop ball. The ball that is being referred to by the current iteration of the for loop in the collision detection method. We then use bank to negate the check so that the code inside the if statement only runs if they are not the same. We then use a common algorithm to check the collision of, a, of two circles. We are basically checking whether any of the two circles we are overlaps. This is this is a, this is explained further in 2D collision detection. If a collision is detected, the, the code inside the inner if statement is wrong. In this case, we are we are just setting the color the color property. For both circles to a new random color. We could have done something far more complex by like getting the balls to bounce off each other. Other realistic, other realistically, but 
but that would have been far more complex to implement for for such physics simulation developers tend to use a game of physics libraries such as physics genius matter genius and faster two you also need to call this one this method in each frame of the animation add this following <coughs> add the following below the Save and refresh the demo again, and you see the balls change following the like. Note if you have trouble getting this example to work, try comparing your JavaScript code against our previous version. Okay, you change following the like. Summary. We hope you are from writing your own real world random symbol example using various objects and object oriented techniques for plots the model. We should have given you some useful practices using up your real view world context. This is that's that's it for object article. All that remains now is for you to text your skills and object assessment. So, Guys, hello. Yo. So, is it, is it six? It's almost six years. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, my eyes are so heavy. <laughs> I hear you. All right. Um, I'm going to share my screen real quick and then we'll um, okay. end the meeting. All right. Okay. So, we pretty much went through uh, most of the JavaScript on MDM. All we got left is client uh, client side web web APIs. Oh, so I think we'll go back to MScript. Uh, well, what we're gonna do is go back to Free Code Camp tomorrow. Um, we finish the algorithm, then we'll go to MS. We should enter MScript. We should go into MScript. Yeah, I think we're gonna definitely go into tomorrow. Yes, so six. We, yeah, we can we can finish uh, the uh, basic um, algorithm scripting that we started, and we'll now go into. Uh, yeah, PS. we'll we'll get back into that because I think uh, some of them require some regular expressions, which we haven't really touched on. Oh, um, thank you, no problem. Yeah, so I think we'll we'll do ES six tomorrow. But as far as like stuff you can work on in your off time. Um, there's still this image gallery. I hadn't done, the, done this one yet. It's under building blocks and the assessment. Yeah, sorry though, so I didn't even, you know, I didn't finish the class with you the other day, so I didn't get there. Yeah, I, I haven't done this one yet either, but we could do the, um, the image gallery if you want to practice. Yeah, and then on this one, they have you, uh, you can add to the bouncing balls, um, code we just did by adding like an evil circle object and, like another object so just to get practice on objects where's that where uh that's at the bottom of that's just after the one you just read so right here oh okay at, okay, at okay, the okay. bottom of javascript okay, objects. assessments okay okay, yeah. okay okay all right all right so okay. but yeah i'll stop the recording there and um yeah we're done with this meeting for today